As actors, we are often told to take risks, to make bold choices, and to be risky. But what does that actually mean, and how do you translate that into a performance? I will talk more about risk-taking after the bump. Hello! This is Augmented Actor, where we help you augment your acting career with tips, tactics, and tech. My name is Doug Fall, and I am so happy to see your face here today. At the end of this video, if you like what you saw, remember to hit that subscribe button so that you can see more content like that delivered to your YouTube feed. So we're talking about risk taking today, and this is something, it's kind of like networking. Uh, it's a thing that actors hear all the time and they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to take risks and they don't know what the right risks are to take. When I was in college, uh, I did a full year of actor training at the University of Utah and anybody could, could do this. You could just sign up and take a year of courses. But at the end of the year, they had an audition to continue on in the program. And this audition for me consisted of, of a monologue and a little scene, a two-person scene that's kind of a, a nonsense scene. And by that, I mean, it's, a, it's one of those scenes where it's person A and person B, and the dialogue is very non-specific. So it could be put into a lot of different scenarios. Me and my scene partner got together and we, we tried all these things, but it just didn't seem right. It didn't fit the dialogue quite right. And when I went to do the audition later, I think I chose the most boring way to, to present it because they asked me like, did you try anything else? And I said, yeah, I did. And this just felt like the right way to do it. I think that was the totally wrong answer to say to that question, but it was also uh, an indication that I didn't take any risks. And other people I later learned tried crazy things, pizza delivery and aliens on a different planet or a couple, you know, fighting and then making love, all kinds of stuff. And I didn't take those chances. I just sort of thought that there was the best way to play it and, uh, and I didn't take a risk. So that is rule number one of risk taking is think of the best way to play this scene. Think of the, the right way to play it and then do the exact opposite or come up with something different. Casting people and auditioners and directors, they, when they're auditioning people, they see a ton of people. And if they're seeing the same people do the same piece over and over and over again, they are dying to have somebody come in there and blow them away. Number one, they either are doing the piece super well or they make a choice that's different from the rest of the actors. And most people are gonna play it a little safe and they're gonna to try to give the best performance within a very narrow parameter. And so widen your parameters a little bit and try to think of something that other people aren't doing. And if you get a chance to see other actors doing the same scene or the same piece in their auditions, that's when you can kind of say, mm, I'm gonna try something a little different. Let's talk about taking risks in the choices that you make for the pieces that you do. So when you're choosing a monologue or a song to do for a general audition or just to have in your book, you want to look for pieces that fit your type for sure, but that maybe uh, show off an element of you that you don't normally get to play. They don't think you're a, a brilliant singer, uh, so you pick that song that shows that you, are, you can slay a song. That's a good risk. Or you play a character that is totally different from you, you as a person. Look for things that you have strengths in. If you've got a really belty, brassy voice, play to that. If you are great with dialects uh, or character traits, then play with that. When you're choosing a piece, uh, you want to know what the trends are, the current trends, and try to avoid those trends. So for instance, if you're trying to choose a song for uh, a show, and Hamilton or Hairspray is really big right now, then don't choose Hamilton and Hairspray because chances are everybody else is going to do it. You may think, hey, I've got this great song. I'm gonna do that one song from Hamilton that no one's doing, but of course, everybody's gonna be doing it. And trends kind of come and go too. Certain songs that were popular 10 years ago or monologues that were popular 10 years ago are going to get lost for a while, but then they're gonna make a resurgence. So you kind of gotta uh, understand that if you look up 
best monologues for men or something like that, you're going to see the same exact monologues that everybody else that's looking that term up are, are going to be seeing too. So chances are you're going to bring in the same piece as everybody else. Each auditioner is going to be a blank slate for you. If you have a history with the person that you're auditioning for, you want to show them something that they haven't seen before. That is taking a risk. The element of surprise is important in risk taking. Catching people off guard, especially in comedy, is something that you want to strive for. When I was doing a production of Little Shop of Horrors, I played the dentist, there was a moment where I had to hand one of the urchins a dollar bill. Most people would just take a dollar out of their pocket and hand it to the, the girl. In rehearsal one day, I didn't do this during a performance, you never want to pull these surprises during performances, but in rehearsal, I, uh, without telling anybody, I took the dollar bill, I folded it up, and I put my thumb on the corner of it, had it palmed in, in my hand, and then when asked for the dollar bill, I ran my hand through my greasy hair, and then I flipped the dollar bill out and handed it to the girl like that. And it got a huge response from the director and the girl, and we kept that bit in the show. Having those little elements of surprise at an audition or even in a rehearsal is a, a risk taking. Uh, it may not go well, so you have to kind of rehearse those bits and make sure that you're doing them properly. But if you can pull something off like that, you can really surprise people. And if it surprises the director and the rest of the cast in an, in an audition or in a rehearsal process, then it's definitely gonna surprise an audience. When you're studying a piece and coming up with a character, take time to look at weirdos and freaks and, and, and people that just have quirky personalities or high-pitched voices or really low voices or, or different cadences or different postures and really be specific and give yourself a defining character. Don't just play things generic because they don't want to see generic. Another story of mine in college again, I was auditioning for a farce and I can't remember the name of the show offhand, it doesn't matter, but there was a, a, a little secondary character that I was being brought in for and I didn't have a shot in hell of getting this part. You know, I knew it was kind of precast. I knew that they had certain people that they had to use and it was a very small cast in a union house and I was just a, a first year acting student. But one of my friends who kind of mentored me through this audition said, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have your best audition if you make some really bold choices. So I took this norm, normal character, sidekick kind of character and I went and I studied some outrageous characters on television. I took uh, uh, this guy that was in this terrible auto commercial that played in, in Salt Lake when I was back there, and he just was this character. He had like this lisp and this weird wafty hair, and, and he, he just kind of this nerdy, snorty personality, and I was just like, "How that guy is so extreme. If you see a person in real life that is just so extreme and absurd, it's game to imitate that person. It's, it's, it's totally a risk to take somebody who's got an outrageous personality. And we think when we get into character studies and, and choosing pieces that, um, that people can't be extreme like that. But there are, I mean, look at Truma Capote or Florence Foster Jenkins, your aunt or your uncle that is just a, an outrageous character. And you would think that those people don't exist, but they exist in all walks of life. So find character traits from those people and bring them in. By the way, in that audition, I, I nailed it. I, I made the director laugh. He really took notice of me. He didn't cast me, but the person that he did cast did the character exactly like I had done it uh, because it just presented a, a great idea. So I, I, I took that as a badge of honor. Now, when making bold choices with how you play a character, you want to make sure you're playing within the parameters that are given. Like you're playing Dolly in Hello Dolly and you gotta be a certain type. You're going to be wearing a certain type of costume. You're going to have the waiters moving about you and you have to sing the certain songs. So they're looking for a character that fits within these boundaries. But within those boundaries, you're free to play. Don't play the center. Play the extremes. Give Dolly a bit of a quirk, uh, a flightiness. You know, you can have her be a little dotty, or, uh, or you can have her be very witty and on the spot. Finding the place within those boundaries that nobody else finds is the way to go, to, uh, to take those risks. Now, if a character is sort of looser uh, or uninterpreted previously, maybe for a film audition or something like that. If you're playing a cop, a cop can be 
anywhere from over here to over here. It can be anywhere in the extreme. It can be a stern, mean, old cop. He wants to press charges, so we're gonna have to bring you in, I'm afraid. Or it can be a young rookie that fumbles over his gun, like Don Knotts. We'll be ready for him. <laughs> it can be uh, anywhere in these extremes, so it's important for you to find your place in there that nobody else has found. You can't always know what other actors are going to be doing, but you can kind of know what's expected and then give them something else. The element of surprise again plays here. Every line you read has a hundred different ways to say it. Again, pick the way that you think it should be said and then try stressing different words. Try running your lines in a mirror and seeing if you can come up with something different. Try reading your scenes with different people to see if what they give you makes you respond differently. And if you get reactions from somebody you're reading with, um, play into that because that surprised the reader so it might surprise the casting person or the audience as well. Risk taking isn't always about saying the lines in a different way or choosing the right piece. It's also how you react to other people in the scene. So if you're doing a scene with another actor, uh, play with how you react to what they're saying. If the normal response would be to get angry with them, try laughing or uh, dropping something. Reacting in an unexpected way shows that you're taking a risky, bold choice. And do a little bit of research. It, the more you can watch other people, I watch, when I'm directing a show or even in a show, I will watch YouTube videos of high school productions. Uh, most of these shows are pretty amateurish. Uh, and so I learn the things not to do, not, don't direct it that way, don't have dramatic pauses, don't have these set changes be like this. Uh, but also watch people that have done it before and try not to mimic them. Try to mimic people in your life to, to make those character choices, but don't mirror how something has been done. If you're singing a song, don't sing it like it's been sung on the cast album. Sit down with a pianist and discover your own way of singing it and ask people, what surprised you about my performance? Uh, what, uh, what could I do that is bigger or broader or, or, or different than everybody else? And listen to their advice and then take what you want and, and work with it. The important thing is that you're flexible and that you examine and you try your pieces out in multiple different ways. Don't get locked into one way of doing a piece because uh, when you're in an audition, they might say, try it again and do it this way. And if you can do it totally different, if you're practiced doing it totally different, then you'll be able to play a little bit better and you'll be able to surprise them because it seems like you've taken a risk with the second read over the first. And so that's really important to do. So give yourself that flexibility and play around with your pieces. Try them uh, when you're ironing and, and, and doing the dishes and try them in front of a mirror and try them on camera and try them with different people. And you'll see that the, uh, the risks, the, the risky, bold moves will start to rise to the surface and, and you'll start to identify them and go like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. I never thought I could interpret the line that way. When was the last time you took a big risk at an audition or on stage? I want to hear about it down in the comments below. Did it pay off? And lastly, uh, there are some videos on your screen right now. Please remember to subscribe and share this video with your actor friends. Like it. All that stuff helps me. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.